This is Macro Voices, the free weekly financial podcast targeting professional finance, high net worth individuals, family offices, and other sophisticated investors. Macro Voices is all about the brightest minds in the world of finance and macroeconomics telling it like it is, bullish or bearish, no holds barred. Now, here are your hosts, Eric Townsend and Patrick Serezna. Let's get to that chart deck. Listeners, you'll find the download link for the post-game chart deck in your Research Roundup email. If you don't have a Research Roundup email, it means you're not yet registered at MacroVoices.com. Just go to our homepage, MacroVoices.com, and click on the red button over Victor's picture that says, Looking for the Downloads. Now, Nick... Let's get to talking some of these charts. On page two, I have that S&P 500. What levels are you watching? Yeah, so spot right now is uh, 4030 on SPX. I expect to move currently for the February 17th OPEX is 150 points or 3.7% in either direction. So the upper expected move there is 4180. Uh, we've, we're currently sitting just above that strong resistance area of 4000, which seems to have broken for now. Next pivot would be 4120 area or so. And obviously, if we continue with the upward momentum that we've seen the past week or so, um, that should hit in the next, I'd say, probably the next few days. Uh, lower expected move would be 3880. Again, this is the February 17th OPEX. Support 3800, then 3700 with lows of 3500 acting as heavy support. And we have the jobs data coming out uh, later today, as well as real GDP. And then tomorrow we have consumer sentiment. So that should cause a move in the markets. But uh, Eric... What are your thoughts here on the S&P? Well, we've got four daily closes now above the 200-day moving average, which is co-located with the 38.2% Fibonacci retracement of the big move down from 4,800 to the uh, to the recent lows. So uh, that's a new record in this cycle. In the previous advances above the 200-day moving average, it had only you know gotten up for two or three daily closes. Now we've got four already closed, and it looks like so far it's a green candle on the day today, although it's before the open when I'm recording. If we get another up candle today, that would be five daily closes in a row. Maybe we are going to hold above and uh, move higher. As far as upside targets from here, the 50% retracement would be 41.53. The 61.8% retracement would be 43.08. So I think 43.08 is kind of the cap on how far a bear market rally can go. Once you're beyond the 61.8, statistically, it's more likely at that point that it's going to continue uh, all the way back to new all-time highs. I don't think that we're headed for that. I think this is a bear market rally. So I think it ends somewhere between where it is right now and 43.08 on the S&P. Where in that range? Frankly, I have no idea. Yeah, the interesting thing about the S&P 500 for me uh, is the fact that uh, so far every dip's been bought and each time it's more or less a retracement. Uh, what I did on uh, the chart was put the 50-day uh, moving average, which oh, at least over the last couple of weeks, once we broke above it in January, it really has acted as short-term support. And um, while I personally uh, still uh, anticipate a, a, a bear market decline of some sort this year, it's clear that this is not the moment in the cycle and its earnings are not the catalyst. The one thing to watch is all the major central banks are talking next week between the FOMC, the ECB and the Bank of England, all within a 24 hour window. And while between now and then, uh, the prevailing market trends are, are the path of least resistance. The interesting thing that I'm going to be watching is whether by the time that we're recording next week's episode, whether the have triggered some sort of new trend moves to, uh, to begin. Uh, so what is interesting is, Nick, that you're, you're talking about that overhead level of uh, uh, 4180, and that uh, is definitely a short-term target. And what I think uh, is very plausible here is, is the market continues to edge higher and crawl higher until it's uh, in the prevailing trends, until a catalyst emerges. And it's, at this moment, its earnings have not been that catalyst. So maybe the FOMC may uh, offer that. And that's uh, certainly one of the things that I'm watching. So uh, let's move on to the NASDAQ chart on page three. Uh, I have the QQQs here. And uh, for me anyway, uh, this uh, has been making some meaningful progress. It, it tested that key support line and is now approaching 
those December highs. Uh, what are the um, uh, implied ranges here, bud? Yeah, so looking at the triple Qs, we have February 17th OPEX. Current spot is around 290. Expected move for that expiration date is about 14 points or 4.8%. The upper move would be around 304. Again, resistance is right now at the current level we're at, 290 or so, with a gap way above at 310 or so. Lower expected move is 276, again, for the February 17th OPEX. Support is heavy at 260 and then 254, which are the lowest from October. Um, we had Microsoft reporting uh, on Tuesday. They had a pretty poor report overall. Stock was flat yesterday. We came down heavily on that and then finished the day uh, pretty much flat, which was pretty impressive. Tesla last night reported they beat on, on the top and the bottom. Free cash flow came in pretty weak overall. But again, the stock is up right now as we speak. And then we have Apple and Google uh, next, re next week reporting as well. So more heavy hitters on deck next week. Nick, I wanted to actually move on to uh, the VIX chart on page four. And uh, usually when a market is uh, calm and uh, progressing higher, uh, it usually is under a period of volatility contraction. And that uh, trend really continues. I mean, you can uh, draw a clean trend line uh, along all those highs, just showing how volatility is persistently making lower highs in uh, and gravitating to that uh, key uh, all those key lows around 20 what's what's your take on uh, the vix here yeah so as i said over the past few weeks we've seen consolidation uh, in the vix around the 20 area and over the last year or so we've seen small pullbacks to the 20 area as well which have been short-lived typically often followed by a massive spike in the vix so right now i think we're waiting for earnings season to finish up before we get that big move that, that we should see you know, either up or down in the next month or so Current spot VIX is around 19.26. Uh, Expected daily moves based on that in broad markets are around 1.2%. Put to call volume right now is about 0 0.05, which means that roughly 20 times uh, the number of calls are being opened per put, which is very bullish on the VIX and very bearish on broad markets. Uh, put to call interest is 0.32. So we have roughly three times the number of calls being opened per put. Again, bullish on the VIX, bearish on broad markets. And key level, as I've stated previously, is 25. If we break this, could see a major run to 30 or 35, which would coincide with a larger leg down as well. So on page five here, we have the U.S. dollar index, which is in a severe downtrend. Uh, what are you making of this right here? Well, you know, it's interesting. Uh, I think that this really has been the macro tailwind. When the dollar put in its short-term high and began this contraction, when we had that big pullback in, in the U.S. dollar yen, when the euro and, and pound both had substantial rebounds, uh, this became uh, the backdrop for alleviating a lot of the stresses on everything from emerging markets to global equity. But uh, this dollar trend continues, and uh, it's been a huge tailwind for gold. It's been a huge tailwind for uh, so many other asset classes. And uh, in what I'm going to 100% be watching is whether or not the uh, central banks uh, next week are going to become the catalyst for potentially creating new volatility in the dollar. I still am in, in the camp that uh, when we go through another risk-off cycle, that it uh, certainly would have a, a bullish impulse on the dollar. But there's clearly no sign of that today. And uh, it probably uh, going into those central bank meetings uh, is going to be just more of the same here. But uh, will we get uh, a, a U.S. dollar reversal next week is uh, one of the interesting things that I'm going to be watching. Now, moving on to page six here, we have the charts on gold, which are currently making highs, recent highs, and uh, looking like we're going to possibly break out above that 2000 area and possibly push to new all-time highs. Eric? What are your thoughts on gold? Well, the only thing not to love about gold here is that it hasn't given us many pullbacks to allow opportunities for new longs to enter this market. Looking at the chart, gold uh, is what I call jump the tracks, which is my own terminology for when you've got something trading inside of a channel as gold was. It breaks above the channel resistance line as it did and establishes a new channel. So what used to be the channel resistance line becomes the channel support line and a new parallel channel resistance line forms above that. 
That's exactly what's happened. We've got one, two, three, four, five uh, tests of that new upper channel resistance line, which right now is at 1950. Hit that overnight. The bottom of that channel is down at about 1912, and it looks like we're uh, on the way down this morning, 1935 or so as I speak. We really haven't seen in the last couple of weeks anything below the eight-day moving average, which right now is at 1926. So that would be where you'd expect to see the buying point if we're going to see another you know, daily fluctuation like we've been seeing up and down between the eight-day moving average and the top of that new uh, formative trend line resistance level. But hey, an eight-day uh, test, you know, there's lots of room below that. We could get all the way back down to 1840 or so and not violate the channel support line in the old channel, the lower channel, before it jumped the tracks. So it's awfully daring to try to get in this late in the game with new money. Makes more sense to wait for a pullback, but boy, this market hasn't given us a decent pullback. Yeah, Eric, uh, you know, your your comments uh, are are uh, somewhat uh, in line with mine. Almost every rally is checked at some point, and there's certainly going to be a period where, where gold's rise is going to uh, have some sort of pullbacks. The bigger question in my mind is, uh, will gold generally be well defended during corrections? I think those are the really important things to to watch. I, uh, you know, Nick, you, you were talking about gold going to all-time new highs. I uh, I uh, while I think that this year that that will be the case, I, I really do still anchor off of the fact that uh, this entire gold move correlates very very well with the dollar decline. And uh, what the dollar does next will be a huge uh, play in terms of uh, whether or not gold actually can clear 2000 in this trend impulse. I think uh, next week we're going to find out. But one way or another, I, I think that uh, for new positioning in gold, uh, w- waiting for dips is going to be an important way to reset the asymmetry of the trade. Nonetheless, I wanted to move on to page seven where uh, I got the crude oil chart. This is the March contract. And um, we had uh, crude oil nicely consolidating, but the failure of it to actually break above some FIB levels around this 82, 83 uh, still have not confirmed that uh, a new bull impulse has begun. Actually, in fact, a failure at these levels could usher in a retest of its previous lows. Uh, I, uh, in the bigger picture, have a, a bull angle on crude oil and think it's going much higher. And so to me, one of the most important things to see uh, whether a new bull trend is starting is whether or not it can uh, get into these mid 80s and then suddenly we see the pattern of uh, higher highs and higher lows uh, start to emerge that uh, start will start a potential new trend. But what's interesting is on page Page eight is uh, I have those natural gas futures and boy has this been uh, an ugly sell cycle. We now this morning find natural gas futures trading under $3. Uh, at this stage, uh, there's a number of measure moves that even suggest two and a half dollars on the downside. But the way I kind of am perceiving this is, okay, well, the move from $10 down to $3 has already happened. And uh, while uh, you know there's volatility risk and very heavy distribution, uh, at some juncture, down here, I think we're very close to a, a, a tradable low. But even though we're close to that low, it may not necessarily result in a new bull trend, but rather uh, the level where nat gas may consolidate. Um, the interesting thing is, from a seasonality perspective, you know, m- much of the winter is already been priced in. So the question then is, do we have to wait until the second half of the year to see a more meaningful turn up in natural gas? And so while I think the lows are slowly coming in here, I don't necessarily, uh, I'm not too eager to rush to uh, be buying here. Folks, if you enjoy Patrick's chart decks, you can get them every single day of the week with a free trial of Big Picture Trading. The details are on the last pages of the slide deck or just go to bigpicturetrading.com.
That concludes this edition of Macro Voices. Be sure to tune in each week to hear feature interviews with the brightest minds in finance and macroeconomics. Macro Voices is made possible by sponsorship from BigPictureTrading.com, the Internet's premier source of online education for traders. Please visit BigPictureTrading.com for more information. Please register your free account at MacroVoices.com. Once registered, you'll receive our free weekly research roundup email containing links to supporting documents from our featured guests and the very best free financial content our volunteer research team could find on the Internet each week. You'll also gain access to our free listener discussion forums and research library. And the more registered users we have, the more we'll be able to recruit high-profile feature interview guests for future programs. So please register your free account today at MacroVoices.com if you haven't already. You can subscribe to Macro Voices on iTunes to have Macro Voices automatically delivered to your mobile device each week free of charge. You can email questions for the program to mailbag at macrovoices.com and we'll answer your questions on the air from time to time in our mailbag segment. Macro Voices is presented for informational and entertainment purposes only. The information presented on Macro Voices should not be construed as investment advice. Always consult a licensed investment professional before making investment decisions. The views and opinions expressed on Macro Voices are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of the show's hosts or sponsors. Macro Voices, its producers, sponsors, and hosts Eric Townsend and Patrick Ceresna shall not be liable for losses resulting from investment decisions based on information or viewpoints presented on Macro Voices. Macro Voices is made possible by sponsorship from BigPictureTrading.com and by funding from Fourth Turning Capital Management, LLC. For more information, visit MacroVoices.com.